So before I start this video, let me ask you a question. When you're starting your new illustration and all of a sudden you're just deep into that illustration, do you feel like your edges are just not feeling as sharp? Do you feel like the edges are looking low quality and the whole, the whole drawing when you try to print your drawings, they are just not feeling really high quality. There's something to them. Maybe the, the edges are just looking really pixelated or like the quality of the drawing itself just doesn't look as good as it could be. Well, today we're going to answer all of these questions and I'm going to show you a few places where you may be actually missing. And we're also going to be building two custom brushes, one with tapering and one without, that both are going to be ready for high quality illustration. This is a video that you definitely don't want to miss because the files that we will be creating in this video, I'm going to be putting them as a link in the description box down below in my Gumroad page is going to be free and it's going to be for you to be able to download these files and start working with some high quality illustrations for your own artwork. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. All right, so the first possibility here is that you're actually working with the wrong canvas in Procreate. And that is something that is extremely important whenever you're starting to create a new illustration. So for example, we can make illustrations that should go or are going to go as posters. So you're gonna send them off to print and you could also work with illustrations that are only gonna be seen digitally. The problem is, for example, when you create a file that doesn't hold enough quality to be printed and you're trying to make a poster. So to give you a very obvious example here, like this file here doesn't have a lot of pixels at all to be seen as a poster. And if you start drawing on this canvas, you see that the lines already look quite jagged. So you don't really have a lot of quality in the, uh, in the edges of your illustration. So if you were to actually try to print this file, even if you try to print this um, with a small kind of output, so as a small print, you could still get quite a bit of low quality in your print. So let's make one of these canvas templates here uh, together. And don't worry, cause those templates will also be in the file that I'm putting in the description box of this video. So now if I were to create something that I wanna print, for example, a poster, I could go into the custom creation here on, on Procreate 5, and I could also change from the units, I could change it to inches. And now I have more control. I don't have to be calculating in pixels. What is the size that I need? So in this example, I'm just going to make a 12 by 18 inches uh, poster, which is a vertical poster at 300 DPI. And then Procreate on an iPad Pro second generation is able to give me 23 layers to work with, which I know it doesn't sound like a lot of layers, but it's, it's manageable. It is possible to work with that if you keep cleaning up, you know, merging layers, making sure that you're optimizing your illustration. So once I create this file, that very same brush, I would have to actually make it bigger so that I can get bigger, bigger results here on my canvas. If I put it more or less to the size that I had on the uh, very small file, uh, this is the size of the brush. So Procreate actually is able to understand and, and here you can definitely see how this file actually will already ho uh, hold more quality to your illustrations. And I forgot to say just one thing as you're creating this file, I'm just gonna head back into the gallery here and uh, go back into the canvas creating section. Uh, once you have your file, and I'm just gonna type those again, 12 by 18 inches, make sure to check with the print shop as well, what kind of a color profile you need to deliver that file. Most of the print shops will actually ask you to deliver a CMYK compatible file, which Procreate 5 is compatible with, but some other services such as Society6, for example, they actually accept an RGB file that you can send for printing. They do some kind of a color matching technology there where your colors can actually retain some of the brightness and, um, and saturation from the RGB colors to paper. I've actually tested a couple times and I've, I've gotten some pretty decent results. Okay, now that we've covered the canvas section, what other things could we be doing that is actually not helping our illustrations? The second possibility that your illustrations may not be looking so good once you are um, exporting them is because you, once again, you've actually worked with a wrong size canvas and at the end, you actually need to uh, resize your illustrations. 
and uh, you actually have to be really careful when resizing here on Procreate for many reasons. Let me just show you a couple. Well, if you go here on the Actions menu and on the, on the Canvas section, you have the option to crop and resize. If you were to actually crop here, and I'm just gonna throw a random number here, 1024 by uh, 2048, and I would just, uh, and hitting done, you're actually cropping your illustration and Procreate actually deletes the pixels that were outside the boundaries of your new canvas. So right there, it's actually, you know, you could be losing your work, especially if you were to hit gallery by, by mistake, Procreate would then save the file and you would lose some of your work because there's no way to, once you save a file by exiting to gallery, there's no way to actually go back. The other problem is when you actually try to scale the illustration by yourself here with the move tool. So once we actually use the move tool, you are actually allowed to do uh, scaling. However, if you notice here at the bottom right section of the UI, we have actually three modes to scale your, um, your images, and that is the interpolation scaling. So basically within these three modes, what I can definitely say is that bicubic is the one to go. Bicubic interpolation is a way of interpolating data points in a two-dimensional regular grid. Basically, the surface is smoother than the corresponding surfaces obtained when you scale with bilinear interpolation or even nearest neighbor interpolation. To give you um, another more clear example, nearest neighbor is really good when you're dealing with pixel art. That is the mode you actually want to have when you're scaling things with pixel art so that when you're, uh, you know, pixel art, you're actually working with a really small canvas so that you can blow up the uh, canvas and the image as well. And the pixels will retain its sharpness. It's not going to add uh, anti-aliasing to the pixels. The pixels are going to be very strong and opaque and without the, um, you know, the artifacts. So uh, you definitely, when you're working with more, you know, stylized illustrations or realistic il illustrations, you definitely don't want to be using nearest neighbor. And I'm going to put on the screen right now an example of two illustrations. Uh, it's basically the same, but both were scaled up with a different algorithm. The one on the left was scaled with the bicubic interpolation, and the one on the right was scaled with the nearest neighbor. And just notice that, and I hope that, he, that this is actually very visible here on the screen, that on the right side, the uh, nearest neighbor, you already get way more artifacts, just, just straight up looking at the edges. And looking at both illustrations, although like they do have a little bit of a compression, the one on the left is still better. I do have to say that this is already not the best way to go. Once again, it's really important for you to know uh, what are the sizes that you need to work with. And in many ways, it's actually better to start with the biggest size, make your file so that you have the best resolution and then scale down to other deliverables. That is the best way and not the other way around, of course, not working with the smallest file and then scaling up, scaling up to the other deliverables because it's only gonna be losing information, pixel quality. The only way you can do that is with vector files. And Procreate is unfortunately a raster program, so it turns your artwork into pixels. So once again, be very careful when scaling artwork and try to work with the right size from the beginning. All right, now let's set up some brushes. And the first one we're going to do has tapering to it. So if you actually like to make illustrations where there's pen pressure applied to the brush, that's where we are going to set up first. And then we're going to set up a brush, pretty much the same brush, but without tapering. So it's more of a constant width line. And that is if you actually like to make illustrations like uh, the ones that I like to make in this channel, which uh, kind of look like vector art outline illustrations. So now let's get to the part where we create the two brushes for this video. The first one is going to be the tapered brush and the second one is going to be more like the solid line. So the very first brush is going to look at something like this. That's what we're going to be creating. And uh, on your side, what you probably want to do is to hit the brush library and click on the little plus sign here. And that's going to take you to creating a new brush. But in my case here, I'm just gonna go through all of these sub panels so that you can pause this video, you can play this video as 0.5 speed, and you can also head up to the link in the description once again, and you can download this brush for free. So uh, just looking here on the first pane, the stroke path, 
I believe that Procreate by default gives you about 16% on the spacing. Please drop it down to about 9%. On Streamline, we're actually using 30% of Streamline, and that is because it takes about a third of the human error when you, whenever you're creating strokes on your illustration. No jitter and no fall off. When it comes to tapering, I would say a little bit of ta tapering because it's necessary for this brush. Make sure to link the tip sizes before you start dragging these handles. Size, we're going to keep it about 47%, no opacity, and a pressure of 60%. Tip sharpness, we're going to leave all the way back to sharp, no tip animation, and we're not really messing around with the touch tapering features because those are for drawing with your finger. We're gonna leave this uh, brush here straight to um, just drawing with your Apple Pencil. Next on shape, make sure that you're using the solid circle. If you don't have this shape over here, you can always click edit, go into the shape editor and click import, and from the source library, make sure to choose the hard shape, which is this one right here. Then all you have to do is click done. Don't use any scatter, rotations should be set to zero, count should be set to one because adding multiple counts actually duplicates the number of shapes with each stroke and that might actually change the variance on the edges of your stroke. You may actually duplicate the pixels, generating that pixelated effect that you probably don't want to have. So count jitter set to none, no randomization because this is just a simple circle. Make sure that the shape is full and not just something like this. Pressure roundness, roundness should be set to zero and tilt roundness as well. And one of the most important things is the shape filtering for both the shape and the grain shape. On shape filtering and the grain shape, make sure that the filtering here is set to improved filtering, which is a quality that Procreate adds to your brush and to the strokes that you create with that brush. If you leave it to no filtering, that once again is an example for pixel brushes, for pixel art brushes, when you actually don't wanna add any anti-aliasing to the edges of a pixel brush. In the case of these brushes, you definitely wanna have with improved filtering. Now for the grain source, make sure that you're using the full on uh, white square. And if you don't have this option here, again, just click edit, go to import, source library, make sure that you have blank selected. And if you do have it, just click done. You can leave these options on moving, movement to rolling, scale about 20%, zoom, follow size, rotation set to zero, depth to max, depth minimum, none, depth jitter, none. And then don't have to worry too much about these options, but once again, such as the shape, make sure that the grain filtering is set to improved filtering. When it comes to rendering, we're using the intense glaze because as the name says, creates a better, more opaque line. Blending, flow, we're gonna leave at a max. Wet edges, 1%. And these options, I believe you don't have to touch them at all. Same goes for wet mix. We're not really doing anything with the wet mix for this brush. And nothing really for the color dynamics as well. We're just trying to get a basic brush that you can choose your colors and you can just paint with the color that you choose. Now for dynamics, speed and opacity set to 0%. Jitter and op uh, on the jitter side now, size and opacity set to none. On the Apple Pencil features, size, set it to max, opacity, none, flow, 0%, bleed and smoothing, set to none, and a response of about 30%. When it comes to tilting, we're just going to zero that down, so we don't really want to have that capability of having your hand tilting and creating different effects. We're trying to get this, uh, you know, just like a straight up F, uh, stroke that works every single time that you draw. Opacity, gradation, bleed, size all set to none with size compression marked checked on finally on properties uh, we do want to have oriented screen a preview of about 30 percent no smudge and brush behavior minimum size to 100 minimum uh, maximum size excuse me to 100 minimum size to none maximum opacity and minimum opacity maximum set to max minimum opacity set to none uh, these two options here for brush brush behavior, if you do want to increase, these are the default sizes. So if you leave it to 100 and none, these are the values that Procreate understands whenever you're working with the size of the brush here on the outside of the brush studio. So if you set your inside the brush studio, if you set your brush to 100 on the max, when you go here to 
100%, you're using that 100 number. In other words, if I go back into the uh, Brush Studio here and I set my maximum size to 300, and now if I go into my brush settings uh, or to my brush size, you see that when I put it at 100%, you see that the uh, brush actually takes over the whole thumbnail here. And that is because the brush is now set to 300% because that's the number you set for maximum in the brush editor. I hope that makes sense. But it's basically an idea on how you can actually set a default size that will be bigger, especially if you're working with bigger canvases. If you're doing stuff for print, you may actually want to tweak these numbers a little bit. Otherwise, if you leave it at 100 and you set up to max size, this is basically the biggest size your brush will ever get. So if you're, you need to cover a bigger area or, or if it's for some reason you need strokes that are like thicker than this one. And this is a canvas, I believe, at the moment. This is, uh, this is just a screen size canvas, so it's not even a print size canvas, maybe you do want to play with those numbers. Now for the untapered brush, we're just going to go into the options here, but the biggest difference, they are pretty much the same with the differences that on taper, no taper and no uh, linked tip sizes, uh, then I believe that on dynamics, size is set to zero and opacity set to zero and on Apple Pencil, size is set to zero, opacity none, and that should actually create the same brush, but with no tapering on the beginning and at the end of the stroke. Just hit done, and both of your, uh, you know, both of your brushes will be ready to go. And this is the result. So this one, I don't have to really worry. I can go as hard as I want here on the canvas, and the brush is actually not getting bigger. Or if I go you know, very uh, gentle, it's not also going with the smaller size. So these are the two brushes that will guarantee you better work when using high quality illustration files. And finally, guys, one last tip. Whenever you're drawing on Procreate, if you're drawing here your illustration, try not to actually have your hand sliding through your um, through the canvas, especially if you don't have a screen matte protector, such as the one that I'm using here on my iPad. If you have that glossy, the glass screen that comes with the iPad and you're actually drawing with your hand very close to the screen, it's kind of sliding over. And especially if it is glass, it's probably gonna have a tendency to draw and hold your hand a little bit. So it can create these like kinks in your lines. So I guess the best way, one of the best ways that I think that I believe is good to draw is to actually draw with your shoulder. Try to actually put the drawing motion and try to lift your hand and just place the pencil onto the canvas and try to draw with you, uh, moving your shoulder rather than your hand, that being the driver. So uh, by doing that, you will probably achieve better results of course, takes practice. You'll have to. Uh, it, it might be even good to do some warm up, warm up exercises before you actually get to the illustration, but you'll probably yield better results. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Now I'm going to be leaving in the description box below. I'm going to be leaving a link on my Gumroad page, and this one's going to be free, and it will contain a few of the template files and the two brushes, the brush with tapering and the one without for you guys to download and start making your own illustrations knowing that there's some really good quality uh, from the get-go, from the start. So uh, make sure to hit that link if you wanna download these files so that you have these two brushes and the template files as well. If you did find this video helpful, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to, to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, speed paint videos, reviews, and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.